Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Art Whisper 88. On your screen you will see my 16 by 20 large format jelly plate and uh, I have used some markers to make some uh, oval shapes, some rounded shapes and some lines. Uh, this one is a permanent marker called True Red. I think I got this from Blick. It has a chisel point and you can control the thickness of the line. And here's a brand that everyone knows. It's a Sharpie and it's a fine point permanent marker and I use that also to make medium lines and this one is my Arteza brush pen it's a very fine point but it's a brush shape so I can modulate the thickness so I used all three of these and put this on the plate. Now I'm hoping that when I apply uh, a very thin layer of acrylic paint, I'm hoping that the uh, marks will transfer to the uh, print. So I'm going to place this called parchment it's kind of like a creamy beige. It's almost white. And I'll see how this goes. I also did a few adjustments on my registration. Um, adjusted the border lines and the marks where I have the center line of my plate. Uh, you have to keep doing this because as you do a lot of printing, the plate tends to shift or when you do your cleaning it doesn't always go into the same place so it's a good idea to keep readjusting so you this way you know that the image falls into the center of the paper uh, this saves you a lot of trouble. There's no need for trimming. There's no need for adjustments. Okay, this is fairly even. Now normally I would start scribbling and putting marks, but I'm going to try a different technique this time because I already have a lot of lines and marks done with the uh, per permanent markers. So I'm going to use my favorite printing paper which is Somerset and Hopefully this is going to be correctly registered.
Now, in the last video, the reason why I had such a hard time to pull the paper off the plate is I really put a lot of pressure on the paper because I wanted to make sure the ink transferred but I forgot that if you press too hard the paper will kind of glue itself to the plate and you risk ripping it so uh, there's a fine line between putting too much pressure and too little pressure um, so let's see what we got I think this is a good result I got most of the marker off it's transferring to the plate um, it's still very sticky but it wasn't as sticky as the other time where actually pieces of the paper remained on the plate and I didn't like that so actually most of the magic marker has transferred and it has a nice texture uh, I still have to be fairly careful when I pull this I have to be very steady and not do it too quickly so here is the image and it's interesting that the ghost image of these circles are still there now I, I couldn't see them on the plate but once you pull the print they show up and uh, it's, it's an interesting element um, so uh, this is the first pull and I'm quite pleased with it because the lines all show up and then they have an, a nice kind of mottled distressed texture I'll show you the close-up it actually has the look of a lithograph like when you do the images on a lithography stone and this is the kind of effect that you get so uh, I'm going to let this dry as usual uh, it won't take too long because this is just the first pull so I will be right back okay I'm back from a short break and um, I had cut some copy paper to make uh, paper stencils and I have arranged them and I did a layout uh, where I want the shapes to fall and uh, since this is a little more complicated I need to do a cheat sheet because I won't be able to remember how this looks in reverse so I'm going to use a piece of acetate um, it's it's the piece of acetate that the plate came with and I'm just going to roughly mark out the image so I remember where it is I'm 
so I have a guide where these pieces will go on the plate. Okay. So I have my cheat sheet, like so. So now that I have the guide, I can take, I can take these away. Let me show you how I rearrange it on the plate. Okay, I'm going to put this away for now. And use my my cheat sheet. So what I'm going to do is this is how I drew it right side up. So I'm going to do in reverse and uh, so it's kind of like putting back a puzzle so this goes here this large piece goes here have a potato shape here and then I have kind of like a an alien with two eyes right here Then I have this piece here. And then I have this here. And lastly, I have the rectangular piece there. Okay, so I'm going to press this down. So it doesn't move around when I'm applying the next color. I think I'm going to use uh, Liquitex Black. So this will be a very simple color scheme, kind of like beige and black. It's not too colorful. Okay, so now I will ink this up with some black Liquitex. This particular one, Liquitex Basics, it is not very opaque, which I like because it's going to show some detail. And I have to remind myself, once I finish putting the paint, I have to remove the stencils. I don't want a repeat of that disaster last time. Okay, so I'm going to ink up the exposed parts. So 
I had one viewer make a suggestion like, why don't I use a wide brayer? Uh, I do have a wide brayer, a six inch one, but I explained to her that I have a little more control when the brayer is small like this because I'm kind of using the brayer like a brush because um, it's not my intention to create a very even surface. In fact, I like all these these little marks that the, the edge of the brayer or the heel, I call this the heel, the, the heel creates some lines and textures, which I, I like. Again, I have, I'm making a mental note. Once I finish doing this, I have to take the stencils off. Otherwise, I have a big problem. And just a little bit more. Tiny drop more. is more or less evenly charged. Okay, now here's the important part. I keep forgetting to do this. There. Sometimes it's, I need the uh, help of a little razor blade to help me lift off these pieces. just going to use my trusty rag make sure that this is clean I don't have any smears on the edges okay keeping my fingers crossed Here again um, is the first pull. Okay, and I'm going to lay this down. Like so 
And hopefully I did this right this time. I didn't forget to remove the stencils. And hopefully the paper will not rip when I pull this off. By the way, this uh, Somerset paper is 100% cotton. And that explains why it's very strong without being stiff. It's uh, resilient and flexible and it takes water very well without buckling. It retains its shape and I, I highly recommend it. If you decide to do some serious printmaking, Okay, let's see what we got. Very interesting. There's a little misregistration here, but that's okay. like this. The funny thing is now with the black paint, the magic marker lines look blue or purple. Uh, that's because there's a contrast between the cool and warm black. So uh, here is the image. I'm going to do a close-up so you can see. And I like the complexity of the lines and the circular shapes. Uh, that's what I was aiming for. Okay. So, so far so good. I haven't done any bloopers uh, so far. So this is going to dry for a few minutes and I will do my final collage on top of this. So don't go away. Okay, I'm back from a short break. Now, um, during my break, I cut up some of my collage pieces. And uh, this is tissue paper. And I think I'm going to Put that here. Put this here. That there. And this up here. So, uh, let me get my Mod Podge and do this first because this is the fragile one. Just going to prime the area and then Lay it down. Now the thing about tissue, especially this white tissue, once it goes down with the Mod Podge, it actually disappears. It, it becomes invisible. It's almost like a, um, like a clear film. 
So instead of seeing the tissue paper, you just see the images, in this case, the circles, which I'm fine with that. Okay, here's this piece goes here. And this piece goes here. Okay, I think that's mounted nicely. And then lastly, this top piece. goes right here. Okay, I, I better stop playing with this before I ruin it. So let me uh, give you a final look at the completed piece. Uh, I think it worked out nicely. give you a nice close-up view. You see all the textures and contrasts of the lines and the forms. I'm, I'm quite happy with this because the uh, printing process went without a hitch because I followed the sequence uh, and I did use a cheat sheet and that helps a lot because uh, I can't remember sometimes when there's a lot of shapes and it's very difficult to think but in in reverse um, so uh, thanks for watching I uh, appreciate that you follow my uh, channel and my, my little projects. And um, I hope to see you next time.